there are several improvements to configuration inputs in this release. First, all configuration inputs now display their assigned default value in the configuration panel. You can set the default value from a right click in the table view without having to edit the configuration input itself. Default values not only show up first in an insert dialog, but if a visibility condition causes an input to be hidden, Onshape will switch to the default value of that input. The names of configured dimensions can be edited directly from the table. This not only adds clarity to your configuration's input table, but the name is carried through to the dimension itself, making it easier to identify in tools like the Constraint Manager. List values in tables can be reordered using a simple drag and drop. Using the three dots, you can conveniently collapse all configuration inputs. This then makes it easier to reorder the configuration inputs themselves. Using the three dots once again, you can expand all inputs in one click. We hope you find these usability improvements further enhances Onshape's already powerful configuration capabilities. In this assembly, we'd like to evaluate any interferences between the handle and gearbox subassemblies. Selecting them in the interference detection tool yields several results on screen. However, you may notice that several of them are actually interferences internal to each of those individual subassemblies. This release includes a new option, Show Top Level Only, which will ignore any internal interferences and only display those between the selected instances to analyze. Comments are an easy way to communicate directly within an Onshape document. In this case, a markup was used to clearly point out the axle nut which needs updating. The designer has already completed the change, so they will reply back. In this release, reply comments can now include attachments and markup, as well as the ability to tag an entity. This makes it even easier to work in a collaborative and communicative manner, even as a distributed team. Frames can now be trimmed using a mate connector. In the Frame Trim feature, select to trim by faces. Select your frame elements to trim. You can either define an implicit mate connector or use a previously defined explicit mate connector to quickly trim away your selected frame elements. When exporting a DXF or DWG, you can now select the units for the resultant file. Onshape will default to using meters, but this can be changed from the new Unit Selection dropdown in the Export dialog. When exporting a drawing, Onshape will default to using the units specified in the drawing properties, but similarly, this can now be changed prior to export. A few new options have been added to the Curve Surface Analysis tool. Selecting the edge of the surface, the control points for the defining spline can be shown on screen. You can also display knot points, location where the spline segments are joined. Selecting the details and hovering over the curve, you can quickly read the polynomial degree, number of spans, and number of control points for the curve. The same information can also be displayed when selecting an entire surface as your reference. The enclosed feature is a convenient way to turn a surface into solid geometry. In this release, it has been improved to preview any gaps that may be preventing the feature from solving. This makes it easier to repair or fill these gaps, and then update your enclosed feature to create the solid result. Structure View allows you to see a hierarchy of your release data. This release includes a few improvements. When hovering over an element in Structure View, an export icon is presented on the right side, allowing you to quickly download a neutral format without having to open the containing document. If a release contains a reference 
to an obsoleted revision, this is now correctly displayed with an obsolete revision icon. The same is true for obsoleted drawings when using the Show Drawings function. We can clearly see the reference drawing has been obsoleted. This release includes powerful panoramic rendering capabilities, allowing you to define your own custom lit environments without any use of expensive hardware. Let's take a look quickly at the process. In the first step, we will model our environment, in this case a garage. Just a few simple walls, a ceiling, and a floor. Notice it is modeled to scale with the objects in which we will be rendering inside of it. We have also modeled some geometry which represents the light fixtures on the ceiling. These will be important in the next step. Next, create a render studio and insert the environment you have modeled. Here we have applied appearances to the walls, floor, and ceiling as we wish. We have also disabled all environmental lighting and are using a black background. The only sources of light in the scene are the light source emitter appearances which we have applied to those light fixtures we modeled. When you are content with how it looks, you are ready to render this as a panoramic environment. Select the render scene feature. Select your output format as EXR or HDR, and under the advanced, tick the box for panoramic. This will create the spherical environment in which your objects can reside and rotate. You can render or download the image. This creates the EXR which we will use in our final step. Create another render studio and this time insert the subject which you wish to render. Notice we currently have default environmental lighting, but we will change that by navigating to the environment pane and selecting to use a custom image. Select the EXR we created in the previous step. Depending on your lighting, you may need to increase or decrease the light intensity. You will also want to enable the ground, and you may need to adjust the height of it. Notice that your subject is now lit inside of a spherical version of the environment you created. Complete with your custom light sources, picking up reflections and shadows based on the materials and appearances you have applied. Finally, to really make the scene complete, we will use the environment lighting but with an image backplate, which we enable from the background options. To get everything looking right, you will likely need to adjust depth of field, height of camera, and other various options. When you are content with the preview, hit the render button to create your final result.